Hi, my name is Bill Raymond, and I'm going to show you how to create a power-up using SharePoint. As you can see, I have a SharePoint list. It's a small list, but it could be much bigger. But it's a list of all of our trade events that we're going to do. Now, I don't want the salespeople to remember how to get to the SharePoint list. Instead, we're going to click Power-ups and create a new Power-up. We'll give it a name. And then after you click the Create button, Power Apps will run. It will automatically read your SharePoint list, gather all the information, and create a sample application like you see here on the screen. Just because Power Apps read your SharePoint list and created this layout, it doesn't mean you need to stick with it. As a matter of fact, you can choose from any number of different predefined templates, as you can see on the right-hand side of the screen. You could decide to select a picture or adjust text from the SharePoint list. In this particular example, what we're going to do is select an image item from the layout. And you can see here that it reads in your SharePoint list and displays a list view of all of your SharePoint items. Power Apps reads in your SharePoint list information and decides for you how the information is going to be sorted, no matter how it gets sorted in the SharePoint list. In our case, it's currently sorted by the location, but we want this to be sorted by the start date, the venue start date. So what we'll do is click on the layout panel here, and you can see there's a query at the top of the screen. Change that from location to start, and you'll notice that automatically the layout changes and we can see that our first trade event is at the Moscone Center in San Francisco. The title of our app says Trade Events. However, let's go ahead and insert a text box. And what we're going to do with this text box is give a more specific label to this application. So the first thing you do is you insert the text box, and it's not laid out quite the way we want. So we'll just move things around until we get it the way we want it to look. Once you have the layout the way you want it, you can change the text to be more descriptive for your title of your app. And of course, we can modify the title by changing the justification of the text, make it a little bold and change the font size. Once we have it looking the way we want it to, we'll want to realign the list view so we make use of the real estate. Right now, this list is pretty good, but I like the idea of having the event location being a little bit more bold. But if I make it any more bold, I'm also going to have to modify the font size because Las Vegas Convention Center LV might actually go off the screen. I want everything to be seen. Let me show you how to do that. With Power Ups, the first thing you do is select a row and all the other rows are going to change for you. So you can see here I selected the row, I selected Moscone Center SF, I'm making it bold, I'm changing the font size, I'm getting it to look the way I want. And I can also see that Las Vegas Nevada is actually now still fitting on the screen, but with the bolder text. Now that we have a basic layout for our trade events application, let's draw our attention to the left side of the screen. You can see on the top left, there is the view that we're looking at now, and this is our trade events view. Right underneath that is a details screen, and that details shows us more information. And you can see from our application that if we were to tap on the arrow to the right of each one of those events, it would open up the detail screen. We have a preview image of our event center, but it's not in the detail screen. So let's go ahead and add that now. 
First, select the detail screen. Now you can see we have the detail screen up and we want to get to the form. So click the form and then on the right hand side you'll see some properties. Go ahead and click the eyeball for the image and now it appears. You can see there's other fields that are also hidden. Now these are all the fields that we want displayed but they're out of order. The start date, finish date, location, they're not in the order that we'd like. So all you need to do is drag and drop each one of the fields and put them in the place that you'd like. In our case, we're going to have the title, location, start, and finish from top to bottom. Now that we're feeling comfortable with the layout, we want to do a few other things to prevent the user from performing certain actions. In this case, I don't want them to be able to create a new item. I want to manage that in my SharePoint list. So I click the plus sign, click the advanced tab on the right side, and then Go down until you find the visible section. Change that from true to false. And you can see it just disappears. There's different ways that you can lay out this uh, screen, but that's a nice way of doing it. We also don't want them to make an edit, so we'll go to the detail screen and do the same thing. Turn off the editing by just setting the visible feature to false. With the theme of not letting the user make any changes, we're also going to click the trash can and set that visible setting to false as well. This way the user cannot delete any items from the SharePoint list. Now you're probably going to want to see what your app looks like and your app can be run in a browser or it can be run in phones or tablets. So first we're going to just click on the uh, home screen again and you'll see at the top right hand side of the screen there's a little play icon and when you click the play icon, this actually shows you the running app. You can see I'm tapping over here in the area where the ability to create a new item is and it's not working because we made it invisible. You can also see all of the items and if you tap on one of those, it shows you the details. And there's a picture we made along with the new layout of the fields. There's also search built in. So when you search for any item then you can find what you're looking for. Here I'm typing McCormick, I could type LV, I could also type the type of event that it is, and it will always show up in the search, and it's pretty fast. There is one oddity with this, so make sure you clear out any search criteria before exiting, or your search criteria stays on the screen you're editing. So clear out the search criteria, and then you can come back. As I was looking at the screen, I realized there's no date on this main screen here. I'd like for the salespeople and marketing team that are opening this app to actually see the start date. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and I'm going to add that to the app right now. First, you want to click anywhere you want in the first row. I just happen to have selected Moscone Center. It's fine. You can select any area within that row. Then you click insert and choose text box. Now by default the title is going to display or some other field but you're going to have to change that so you can see on the right hand side we're just going to change that from title to start. It's a little hard to see so we're just going to resize this a little bit and move it around. I think that date and the little arrow are going to be too close to each other so I'll just go ahead and select the arrow and then just kind of move that around a little bit until it's maybe a little bit further up in the screen. Then I can take the date and I can move that into the proper location. Before I do that though, what I'm going to do is make a few changes. First, I'm going to resize the font so it looks like that corporate announcement text there. I'll change the color and I'll also write align it. If you've ever worked with a software product before that doesn't look quite right, things are off by a few pixels, it just feels a little sloppy. So take a little extra time and make sure that your text is properly aligned with everything. Use these guides to make sure that everything's centered. You can see here this text is not quite centered and you can snap it and now everything's aligned to the button and the text. As I zoom back out on this, I will point out, remember we modified one row 
and all the rows changed. That's actually a really nice feature of Power Apps. You just change one and everything else looks the same. Now let's save our work. We go to the File tab and we just choose Save. While we're here, we might as well create a unique icon for our app. Right now we get this blue box with three little squares on it. So we can go ahead and select our own icon. Just click Browse File and choose an icon image that you'd like to use. Or you can use some of those other default icons if you'd like. Save this one more time and then get to the cool stuff. Now, I happen to be using an iPhone and I installed the Power Apps app on my phone. So I'll just go ahead and tap that and now you can see there is my app. And once I tap on it, it's going to load the information from the SharePoint site. Depending on the connection that you have, it might actually just take a moment or two. I happen to have a number of pictures, so it'll take a little bit longer. You can see those little dots showing up at the top of the screen. Once the app is loaded, you can go ahead and tap and see the information. Look how it's nicely laid out just the way we had it. Also notice that the plus sign is not available to create new items. We can still do search the same way that we could before when we were previewing the app. And so people can actually see this on the browser and on various devices that Microsoft supports with Power Apps. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, it really does help if you press the like button or even make a comment here on YouTube.